Hello YouTube, Mr. Ozanad here. Tutorial time once again. Just gonna crack a backup of this, showing you how to make do some slightly more advanced smudging. Um, my last tutorial went over some of the basic stuff and a bit more kind of examples of how you can do it, but this one hopefully will help you a bit more and basically just improve your smudging techniques. So this kind of reason I'm doing this because I've been seeing a bit more smudging lately but it's not the best of smudging if I'm honest just give you a quick idea of what I mean see a lot of this um, lately where you basically just get a chalk brush and you just kind of go around the image on with the smudge tool on high strength and you just kind of go out like this around it and this is fine, kind of, but I'm not too keen on it because the way I like to smudge is to, to kind of the aim of my smudging is to add flow to the image and also to break up the harsh lines of the um, I just draw on here, like the harsh lines of the, the original image I want to kind of break those up so I use smudging to do that but this way it does break up the original lines as you can see there's no, there's not the original lines in it there anymore, but then there's these new lines, kind of lines like here, which you just created from the smudging. So I don't really see the point of that kind of smudging. It can sometimes look nice with some kind of more abstracty kind of pictures, but with people, I don't think it's that good. So showing you some ways of how you can become a better smudger, <laughs> if that's if that's even a word. So we're going to start, I'm going to go over kind of three-ish different techniques. I kind of did kind of go over them in my last tutorial, but maybe you didn't see that. I maybe just want a bit more confirmation or a bit more help on how to use them. So first one is the soft round brush, pretty small, set the strength to about 30. And then we are going to, or well first actually we're going to, establish where the flow is going to be going that's something you should definitely do before you start smudging because as I said smudging is really useful to add flow if you don't consider the flow then you're going to kind of muck up the whole image um, because you will have mucked up the flow and everything so in this one um, the flow is really well it's usually the flow is usually in the direction of the motion so as you can see he's he's just moved that way so the flow is going to be generally in that direction because um, well I'm not, I'm not really sure if it's correct to call it flow but basically the kind of the trails of motion imagine if if this was blurred he'll be there'll be kind of blurred bits back here and that's the kind of effect I want to establish with this smudging so just to draw some arrows on gonna be smudging the arms back gonna be smudging this leg down and round and maybe just bits of his body back as well. So, created back up as always, and then I'm going to start down here using soft round brush as I said before. Strength pretty low, and we're going to be smudging. This is this kind of effect gives a very nice kind of blurred effect as I was saying before. This is using the soft round brush gives a nice blurred effect, and we're going to be smudging around here, back here. As I said, around his back and down the arms as well. And there we go. As you can see, it's immediately got kind of um, motion as the back bit's blurred and the front bit's still sharp. You don't have to leave that as that, you can set it to lighten, um, which doesn't really do much in this case. Maybe darken. Darken's probably best. Darken, I believe, gets rid of the light areas, and lighten gets rid of the dark areas. So that's right. So, and then you can just lower the opacity slightly, or even keep it on full. Looks pretty cool. So, as I said, that gives kind of it's very subtle smudging. This first technique, and I'd say subtle smudging is better than drastic smudging because. If you just think about it, it's a lot easier to get it right. 
and it's a lot harder to get it wrong. So if uh, if you're a beginner at smudging, I'd highly recommend just going with kind of subtle smudging. Don't try and base the whole image around smudging um, because it may not look that good. So second technique, as I did in my other tutorial, it's a good old chalk brush with some nice brush priest brush settings. So if you come over here, the button may be different in a different place on your screen, and I'm going to be adding some. 100% size jitter, a um, bit of an angle jitter, a bit of scattering, not too much though, you want to keep it still kind of in a line so you have some control over it, and also strength jitter. Once you've done that, we're going to go for the same, obviously any smudging I do on this image is mainly going to be going in the direction of the motion which I talked about at the beginning, so I'm not going to be smudging the right side at all. And same as before, I'm going to be smudging down this leg. And as you can immediately see, it gives more of a kind of smoky, chalky look. That's why it's called a chalk brush. And it just depends what kind of effect you're going for. If you're going for a more kind of abstracty look, then you might want to use the round brush. But if you want to go for more of a grungy, maybe kind of this looks kind of. If you if you made this kind of look like smoke, it could be kind of like a photo manipulation type thing. And so yeah, this is kind of a more grungy look. And as you can see, that looks pretty cool already. You might not leave it like that. You might set it to lighten, give it a kind of smoky look. Maybe set it to darken. It's a bit too dark though. Might just set it to normal, and then you could just erase parts which you don't like. So I'm going to go along the arm here, maybe down the leg a bit. Get his shoe back. And there you go. Might erase the front bits of this as they kind of break up. I kind of ruin the flow a bit. So that looks pretty nice. That's the chalk brush, moving on quite quickly so you don't get too bored of listening to me talk. Why did I do that? There we go. And finally-ish, I might do there's one last bit after this. We're gonna get hard round brush, set it pretty small, put the strength up. This is um similar-ish way that some to something I did in my smudge speed art. Um just on a side, that was called smudge because I was really just going to make it 100% smudging but then I kind of decided that, that wouldn't really work and <laughs> so I added some abstract renders and stuff anyway back to the tutorial and this one using hard round brush, no brush effects set the strength pretty high and you're going to use this smudging to add some cool abstracty lines you don't need to really use the pen tool um, for this kind of thing if you want to keep the same um, that's pretty horrible, I need to make it a lot smaller um, if you want to use the same colours as the image, then you might as well just use the smudge tool and it gives it a nice effect. I might lower the strength a bit more. That's better. And I'm going to go round out from the sleeve, give kind of like these cool abstracty lines. As I said, similar to what I did in my smudge speed art. Just going around the arm. And it can make it look pretty cool. Also, maybe coming up fingers. On this back arm as well. You might be able to tell I'm kind of rushing this just because obviously it's just a tutorial, just an example. If you spend a bit more time on it, I'm sure you can make yours look a lot better. And might do a couple on the back, just coming down this bit here. And then down to his leg. <coughs> Excuse me. And few there and then some going around his shoe and maybe his shoe kind of going off <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and this is I can't remember if I said or not this is kind of a more drastic way of smudging um, because it really alters the image a lot more and if you took a bit more time on this I just did that quickly you could really get some really nice effects. As you can see, it looks like his foot is kind of melting, gives it a nice cool effect. And I don't think you need to do anything to this really. You could set it to lighten, but it would get rid of a lot of it. Could set it to darken. And that looks pretty cool, but I think I'm going to set it to normal. And that kind of looks a bit more like a. Um, I don't know what I was going to say though. I don't know why I said that. Um, 
So that's just kind of better smudging overall, I think. So finally, just before we go over a bit of a recap, another additional thing you can do with smudging. It's not actually smudging. You can add, one thing I like to do is use some cool looking brushes. And these can really kind of add to the smudging you've done and kind of make it look like you've smudged it more, but in fact you've used some brushes. If you don't know what I mean, then I don't blame you because I'm trying to talk while looking for something. And I don't know where it is. There's like a smoky one I used the other day. Oh, there it is. And so... So if you get the colour of the bit you want to add to, let's say I want to add a bit to the arms. I'm going to pick that colour up and I'm going to use this brush tool. I'll just rotate it around. And it's probably not the best example, but if I just rotate a bit more. And I did that on the wrong layer. <laughs> Why did I do that? Let's go back. A new layer, add some of these, and then erase the bad parts. As you can see, it's not really smudging, but it's just an extra tip I can I sometimes do just to add to the overall effect. I did this in my smudge speed art as well. It's basically just using brushes and whatever other means you want to, clippy masks and stuff look cool as well, just to add to the smudging just so you don't just have smudging there because obviously smudging is only one of the tools in your artillery um, so it's good to use a lot of different tools like one of the I think what makes a good designer is knowing all the tools in the program but not, a, but not only knowing, knowing them but knowing um, when to use them kind of thing so if you start a design I usually think about this when I start a design all the kind of tools are in my head and I, they all give me kind of a picture of what it's going to look like if I use them. So with this smudging, don't just stop at smudging, you can add some brushes like I just did. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, but just using, picking the colour from the image and then adding a bit more. Let's add a bit of the green so you can see a bit better. And I'm going to find any brush. I did it with some stars actually in my speed up got some stars, applied some scattering to them and it looked pretty cool maybe not here but you get the idea and um, might just erase some bad parts as you can see some cool little stars coming out of his arm so that all adds so that arm is looking pretty a lot better than the other arm now because I just added some basic brushes which really enhance the smudging so I think that's going to be about it. Just a bit of recap. So with smudging, before you start smudging, if I were you, I would establish where the motion is, where the flow is going to be going, or if there is no flow, then where you want it to go. Um, so as I said, just look at the direction. Flow usually goes in the um, opposite, or the same direction as the motion, or the opposite direction. See, I could have... Not really in this case, but if he was moving that way, sometimes you could have the flow going in that direction as well. But usually it's going to be um, kind of the trails left behind him afterwards. And then you just look along with people, it's usually like the limbs and stuff. With, um, I can't think of any other example actually, but so just look along like the arms and stuff. And basically just, yeah, so limbs are good because you can kind of extend them and make it look a lot more cool like you see out the foot here I extended the shoe out and I would usually do that rather than extend the body out because that can look like weird because obviously a huge body is weirder than a long arm if that makes any sense so if he had a long arm if I like sending the arm out here with smudging it looked kind of cool and abstract type thing like photo manipulation if I just extended the body out here, just I had a huge backside. Yeah. <laughs> so, just follow the motion, follow the flow, and 
basically just don't go all around the image it's not necessary and it can ruin the image so just go around parts of it if you want you can go around all of it and then just erase parts you don't want that always works and don't have the strength set to 100% just build it up over time as I said it takes time be patient and you'll get the effects you want so thank you very much for watching this tutorial um, latest things on my channel Feedback Fridays will hopefully be coming back. Oh, nearly just knocked my microphone over. Carry on like a pro. Um, Feedback Fridays will be coming back. I haven't been doing the comments thing that I said I'd be doing just because I've been thinking about what I'm going to do next. Looks like it might take a similar series to the one that Eliara beat me to. Um, but I will be thinking about that within the next few weeks. GFX News, as always, is on Saturday night. If you missed GFX News number 3, then be sure to check that out. It's on my channel, the featured video, I think. So as I said, thank you very much for watching the tutorial. More tutorials to come as I try and share my uh, six years of knowledge with you. Um, Six-ish years. So yeah, I keep saying thank you for watching. I'm just going to say bye. <laughs>